Good evening, everybody, and welcome to week nine of the Home Team Friday Countdown. It's the final week of the regular season for our Indiana teams. Where has the season gone to? Chad and Michael are standing by, set to discuss three of the biggest games on the schedule for tomorrow night. All right, tonight's games are rights and modern day. Of course, that big West Side showdown, the battle at the bowl. Always one of the best rivalry games in the entire state. Gibson Southern is hosting Southridge. Both of those teams still have a shot at claiming at least a share. They can only get a share of the pocket championship. We'll see how things shake out tomorrow night. And in Kentucky, it's a big district game between Davis County and Henderson County. Let's go ahead and bring in the guys, Chad and Michael. Fellas, yeah, it's a battle at the bowl this year. Not quite as hyped as in years past. Of course, Wrights is 5-3, and three, Modern Day is 4-4, four and four, but let's not kid ourselves. It's still one of the best rivalry games around. Michael, you're going to start it with the Panthers. After talking to both coaches today, I am excited for these two just to face off. Throw out the records because this one should be a battle. Andy Hape's team finally tabbed back-to-back -back wins with Wright's 71-35 victory over Bossy, which is good, leading into this rivalry game versus modern day. The offense is starting to find some rhythm. They're averaging 67 points in the past two weeks, but look for them to get the ground game going early. The Panthers have rushed for over 1,900 yards on the year. Playmakers like Eli Weetop, Carter Schnarr, and company are looking to make Wright win three straight games as the Panthers, well, they've won the last two against Modern Day. Yeah, I mean, Modern Day's four wins this year, they've allowed just 15 points per game they've allowed defensively. And their four losses, they've allowed 37 points on average. It's going to be crucial for the Modern Day defense to send a message early because Wright's offense, like you said, Michael, has been hot the last two weeks, scoring 133 points. Look for Dax Leonard, Luke Kastenbrock to try and shut down the Panthers and try to avoid a shootout. Yeah, I think if this one is a shootout, then it would definitely go Wright's right way, and I'm really looking forward to seeing the crowd out at the bowl tomorrow night. It's always uh, an, an amazing atmosphere out there uh, for this game, and by the way, that is our Home Team Friday showdown game for tomorrow night. All right, in the pocket, Heritage Hills has clinched at least a share of the championship. Southridge and Gibson Southern, though, they're still alive. Now, here's how it plays out. If the Patriots lose tomorrow night, then the winner of this game claims at least a piece of the title. So it's a big game. Chad, you've got the Raiders. Yeah, it's a huge game regardless of the conference championship. Both of these teams want to go into sectionals with a win. Tucker Shank is healthy too at the perfect time for Southridge. The senior All-Stater missed six games with a lingering back issue before returning to rush for 114 yards and three total touchdowns last week against Pike Central. The Raiders will need the same productivity if they hope to beat rival Gibson Southern for the first time since 2012 and avenge last year's 55-14 beatdown. The Titans, well, they have a tough task facing off against Southridge. As both teams enter the game six and two, Nick Hart's squad has looked good this year against poor opponents, but shaky against some solid teams. Gibson Southern's young freshman quarterback, Brady Allen, will need to continue to air it out and be successful. He's thrown the ball 194 times for over 1,500 yards for 19 touchdowns and three interceptions. Him and Ben Butler, they're going to need to get things going for Gibson Southern. Yeah, I think that's the key tomorrow night, how that freshman quarterback plays in the games that they have struggled. He has looked like a freshman in the games they played well. He's looked in like anything but a freshman. All right, guys, let's go down to Kentucky now. Big district game at Colonel's Field. Henderson County hosts Davis County. And we know both these teams are talented, but let's be honest, both have been a bit inconsistent this year. It's really going to depend on what team shows up on each side tomorrow night. Mike, you get Davis County. Well, Randall, you just said it. Both these teams showed some promise early on, but mostly it's just been scattered with disappointment surrounding the football programs, considering each team has skilled players and the excellent skilled players. The Panthers, though, they've struggled to find their swagger this year. After starting the 2018 season with high hopes, Davis County sits at 4-3, and three, and they look to tack on two straight. That's the positive. But when their quarterback, Joey Cameron, is in rhythm, he can be a nightmare for opposing defenses. He's the current 6A KHSAA passing leader with 1,916 yards and 19 TD passes. Completing 60% of his passes, he's going to be needing good. He's going to need to be doing good, and Tinsley and others will have to help him out as well. Yeah, well, for Henderson County, um, they're just looking to find, you know, their first winning season since, since 2013. Uh, the Colonels are 
coming off, you know, a couple good weeks. Henderson's won nine straight in this series, and Friday will give them, you know, their first winning season since 2013. The secondary could be tested, however. Garrett Greenwell's out with a broken finger. Could be kind of problematic going against Joey Cambron and company, but the Colonel's D hasn't allowed more than 290 yards since the opener, and they'll probably have a purpose to play with on Friday evening. All right, thanks much, guys. Again, you can see all the hides. We have 12 games scheduled for tomorrow night, 10-15 on Home Team Friday. Iowa's News will be right back after this time.